It sounds like you're playing Domo Origato, Mr. Roboto. I am. Na, 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 just what Domo. I need to do. Domo. Domo. Bite size, Rafi and clean. The same awesome flavor in a smaller package. And always filler free. May contain peanut gallery. Hmm? Hola, you amazing artist. You almost took me out. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's what happens when you get so close. Get in too close. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, we have an awesome question from Kim. Uh, and hello, Rafi and Klee. You two are amazing artists. And you, want, you don't want to say hi to Kim? It's so <laughs> rude. Hi, Kim. Hi, Kim. <laughs> Sorry. We didn't want to say hi to you. I got a little ahead of myself. <laughs> <laughs> I did want to say hi. Mm. Hello. Mm. I've been asked to create samples of artwork for a project and given little reference as to what's desired and no mention of commission or contract. How much time should be allotted in creating samples? And is this a way of building commissioned projects? And should I be the one staying in communication with the potential client? I have to say, this this request... Sounds uber corporate to me. It does. Please create samples for us to review. Yes. When you're dealing with a corporation, which I've dealt with a corporation, there's actually one in particular where I created a sketch in a sample, uh, but it was just a, a quick sketch. Like when I do my samples... I don't do actual like art samples where I'm going to spend time on there unless they pay me to do the samples. So like I'll do a quick sketch. It'll still be elaborate, but it'll show what the project is going to look like. Like a small mock-up. Yeah. And so I try to spend as little time on that as possible other than like the design part, but it'll be kind of like a fuzzy idea of what I'm thinking about. And then once they take on the commission or they give me a deposit, then at that point I start to really, really, really dedicate time to it with this same company i've had two sides of that i had the one commission that they took and basically i just went with it and started creating it and then there was a large uh mural that they wanted me to do and in that case because it was um it was going to be potentially a big uh payday for me Uh, I got overzealous and created a bunch of samples and did all this stuff and spent like an entire day working on things for them and then showed up to the meeting and that was the last that I heard of them and they kept the samples. So at that point, uh, I made a promise to myself that that is just not how I'm going to do business from now on because I would rather walk into a meeting with a sketch that took me a few minutes to sketch out and some idea concepts instead of putting a lot of time that is not paid into potentially getting a project. Until you get a feel for what, where they're at and what legitimately might happen there, then don't spend a lot of time and energy on it, yeah. is what you're saying? Yeah, just just because like you never know, especially when you're dealing with a corporate commission. Really, there there's all different types of ways of doing it. I've done sketches for some people. I've taken a commission on without actually having started to sketch, just uh, having a conversation with them talking about what it was that I was thinking of doing. Um, So like it all comes down to your relationship with that person. And really uh, from the sounds of this, if they're, it it almost sounds like they're going to be kind of a pain in the ass to begin with. And that's another thing that I look at because I don't want to spend all this time working on a commission and then there, you know, uh, and then the entire commission is a struggle. And then the entire commission is a struggle because then they're changing their mind here, or they're like, you know, this is what I, it, it, you just your gut will always tell you like this is going to be a pain in the ass. Mm-hmm. And then a lot of times we get dollar signs in front of our eyes and we ignore what our gut is telling us, which is what happened with me with with the the, the mural, the mural. large scale mural, because I was like, oh, ho, ho, I'm gonna payday. And then you start thinking about the money, and then you put all this work in there, even though the money is this virtual thing that you don't have in your pocket. I am more than willing to change things on a project and communicate but i should not be the one who is because it was the same thing with them i was the one that kept initiating the conversation because they just you know disappear that there'd be tumbleweeds and it's so like i was like so what's going on with whatever and i finally got to a point where i was like you know what i am done chasing after someone's butt to try and get them to do business with me. Like, that's not the way, that's not my MO. I don't, I don't go up to galleries. I'm like, please, 
please, sir, <laughs> put my artwork in your gallery. Like, I don't kiss anybody's butt, let alone am I going to kiss someone's butt in order to try and get a commission by doing the things that really, if they were interested, they'd be doing them in the first place. Yeah, totally. I sometimes create basic sketches for my pieces. I even sometimes create prototypes if I'm inspired by the right. concept. But it sounds like here there's not really a concept to begin with, like very little reference as to what they want. Yeah. So that's not very inspiring. Yeah, I would say trust your gut on that. Yeah, and Kim, a lot of times what I do is when somebody's interested in a commission, I'll ask them a bunch of questions. And a lot of a lot of this stuff happens via email or phone call, mostly through email. Mm -hmm. And if I'm having a hard time getting a hold of them or they're taking forever to respond, uh, depending on the circumstance, a lot of times somebody might take forever to respond and then they're like, I'm so sorry we have this going on. You know, people, life, life happens. Yeah. Uh, that's understandable. But if like somebody just drops off the radar and you're, it, it's a pain in the ass just to try and get them to answer questions. Think about the commission and how that's going to work out. Uh, it might just not be time for them to do the commission in that particular moment. Beware of the dollar signs flashing in your eyes. And causing you to uh, make some dumb choices. To devote too much energy to something that doesn't call for it. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Kim, this is a great question. Yeah. Thank you for asking it. We've never quite come at it from that angle before. And I'm curious to know uh, what your guys' opinion is when it comes to commissions and what, what, to, you know, what kind of practice do you have in place when it comes to taking a commission? Um, everybody's going to be different. For me, I don't actually get started working on something until I get the deposit. Then at that point, that's when I really dedicate time. And if somebody's going to get samples, they got to pay for the samples. I mean, if you go to Home Depot and buy paint, you got to pay for the sample paint. Like you don't, you don't just get free stuff. That's true. If you could go to Home Depot and be like, I like this, or I think I like this. Can I have it? They'll be like, no, 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 sorry, you can't have it, no. but it's pretty reasonably priced. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> and thank you so much for watching you guys. You guys are absolutely freaking amazing. I totally adore you. And if you like this and you want to watch more like this, just click right over here to subscribe. And that's it. Say goodbye, Queen. Good day. Adios.